What is the nature of wisdom? That's what we're going to find out in 1 Corinthians 2. Boy, it's a long thing to say, all the words of Corinthians and then the number afterwards. But Paul introduced his letter, greeting to the 1 Corinthians, told them here that you're quarreling about with each other and fighting because you follow this person and you follow that person. And in thinking back about it, it sort of struck me, it's not a lot of what we're doing today with all our different denominations that we aren't following people per se, but we're following their sense of the scripture. I am a confessional Lutheran. Other people follow different directions and we quarrel quite a bit. And he's saying, stop quarreling. And I understand where that is very frustrating to him. He came to them back when we were in the book of Acts. He proclaimed his testimony, and he didn't need anything from them. He says lofty speech or wisdom. I mean, you could tell. Paul's a very smart guy. He could have given quite the speech, could have said very educated things. He was studying in Jerusalem among the best when it came to education in the Old Testament. And now he's saying, I'm not doing that. I'm not using these big wisdoms, these big words. Instead, I am telling you about Jesus and him crucified. I am talking to you with fear, trembling, and it's not my message, but instead it's a demonstration of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves to talk about Jesus and is empowering Paul to say what he's saying to them so that their faith doesn't rest on him, but rests on the power of God. And I think we've seen throughout times many people saying, don't listen to me, Listen to God. Listen to the Bible. It is the scripture alone that matters, not what I'm saying about them. And he's saying the very same thing here, that this is not about the power of men. Kind of ties back into the last episode where we were talking about Apollos and Peter and Paul and who you follow. Don't follow people. Follow Jesus Christ. That's it. End of story. But he says that, you know, mature people, mature in the faith, not mature in age, will impart wisdom, but it's not because of the age or it's not because of the rulers of this world and it's not because of the great philosophers. You know what? Aristotle died. Socrates died. Marcus Aurelius died. All these people that a lot of times we even still think of as powerful speakers, men of wisdom and and wise sayings, you know, they're dead. We're not talking about these famous people. We're not talking about them. They're going to die too. They're going to pass away. Just like the world is doomed, they're doomed to pass away too. Instead, we're imparting a secret, hidden wisdom of God. Now, I find that word of being secret and hidden wisdom kind of interesting because I don't think Jesus makes it much of a secret. I don't think anyone's trying to hide it from people because we're trying to tell everybody about it. We don't want it to be a secret. We don't want it to be anything like that. But whenever we heard, you know, Jesus talk like this too, he wasn't meaning things as being a secret or a deep, dark thing. It is in this particular case, the way Paul is putting it. There are people who are mature, who understand the nature of God, who are mature in the wisdom of God. And then there are people who are new Christians, right? I was one of them. I don't know anything. I got caught up into things. I got caught up into trying to understand how other Christians could sin when we we know about Jesus, right? Why are we sinning? Not understanding. We all sin. That is the nature of all of us. It's the difference between maturity and wisdom that we gain from Jesus Christ and wisdom that are just like babes in the like little baby Christians who don't know what they're talking about. I just uh, was looking on Twitter and someone who was a brand new convert was saying all these things. And it was interesting because it was all entirely wrong, saying something to the extent of, well, God loves us because of our sin. Someone said, look, dude, you're brand new at this. You're brand new in faith. Jesus doesn't love us because of our sin. He loves us in spite of our sin. He loves us for who we are, but his sin we want to extract from us. He wants to separate us from it. We're going to be separated from our sin, just like the goats are separated from the sheep. 
And I think that's what he's saying here. You're speaking, but mature people speak with the wisdom that God has given them. They're able to discern, spiritually discern, which is separate and understand it. They'll be able to judge things, the goats from the sheep, but no one's going to separate him because he's a mature Christian. He understands what's happening, even though he doesn't practice it all the time. None of us do, but he understands what God is trying to get to us. And when we become mature, he says, quote, we have the mind of Christ. This is kind of hard. And I'm glad these chapters are small because what does it mean for us to have this? It's not that we have really the full mind of Christ, but we get a glimpse of it. We understand where God is coming from. We understand the line that God is thinking in. And we understand that the world doesn't offer us anything. The rulers, the leaders, the philosophers, they have nothing. We look at some of the great thinkers in our world today and we wonder, well, that's not the truth at all. That is not how it goes. I mean, I mean, I even see people criticize Christianity and will say something. And I thought, did they ever even read the scripture? They don't really know what they're talking about. They don't understand what Christianity is about, what Jesus is about. Or when people think that Christianity is a very shallow religion, when instead it's very deep, it's very just planted inside the world as a whole. We see it, as John said, from the beginning of time. This is the wisdom of time throughout time. And yet they're saying silly things like, oh, it's a very uh, shallow faith. It's a very shallow thing to have faith in God. Again, talking about this idea that we know the mind of God, if we know any aspect of God at all, it's because the Holy Spirit is inside of us, rests inside of us, and utters truth about God. It is revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Or we even see when Jesus was talking to Peter, and this is in Matthew 16, 13, and he says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jodah. You, this wasn't revealed to you by your flesh and blood, by a Father in heaven. The Holy Spirit reveals to us what we understand of God's mind and has given this to us. So the portion that we understand God, where it makes sense to us, where we understand what it is we're supposed to do, those very few aspects of it have entirely to do with the fact that the Spirit is with us and tells us these things. We have to be careful because there's other spirits out there probably trying to tell us the wrong thing. So we always have to test everything. But God wants us to know him. He wants us to understand what he thinks. And I think we have, like I said, be careful of that because many people throughout history says, oh, I know what God thinks and God thinks that I should put you in jail or I should do this or I should fight out against you. And that's not true. So we always have to make sure that the voice we are hearing is the Spirit of God, is the Holy Spirit, instead of some other spirit trying to lead us astray. What I'm going to meditate on in this particular chapter, and I didn't mention a moment ago, one of my favorite passages in the Old Testament is also one of my favorite hymns, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who loved him. We can't even gain any sort of concept. Even though we might be mature, even though we might be partially wise by the Spirit of the Lord, we, we just don't even know. We can't even imagine what is in store for us. So we have to understand that it, and leave it right there. We just don't even understand. But our goal is to become more mature in Christ. Our goal is to become more discerning in Christ. And our goal is to align our mind with Christ. What I'm going to pray about is I get that kind of understanding, that I go for that kind of maturity. It's easy to be, I don't know, very immature because you don't want to sometimes know the full truth of things. But instead, we should be asking God to reveal himself to us so we can understand his mind. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. What you think you might be getting in heaven, what heaven might be like, what plans God has for you here on earth, you, you don't even know. 
So that's something astonishing. And I hope other people understand that too. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can subscribe, tell a friend, and I hope you share this with someone else. Going through the Bible, doing the slow roll so that we can sit there and examine things in a more careful manner, I, I think that's kind of exciting. I've been learning a lot. I hope you've been learning a lot. And remember that you can always email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening and have a great weekend.